Hi, good morning. This is David Rizzo with Rogers Gardens. And now we're finally going into April. And so April is a transition month. So now as we're coming out of March, we're going to start warming up. And the biggest thing with April that I always stress, other months it could be maintenance, it could be trimming back, it can be doing a lot of other things. April is the planting month. So really, I'm going to be talking a lot about what to plant, probably not as much as the maintenance side. I will talk a little bit about the fertilizers and the um, or organic insecticides, but I'm going to go through a lot of flowers. And if you guys have any questions, uh, wait until the end and we'll answer your questions. And so right now, it's, it's great to start off. So I'm going to go over like some of the herbs and the vegetables, and then we're going to go through some of the flowers and I'll break them down into sections but wait for the end for your questions, okay? So right now as we go into April, the most, the biggest herb, so this is all herbs I'm talking about. So let me lean over, so basil. So right now you wanna start putting your basil in. I grabbed some Italian basil, I grabbed some sweet basil, um, the cinnamon basil, African blue. So all your basils, put them in right now. Now, because usually it's cool, damp, in March but now we're going into April and the weather's going to start breaking we're going to start warming up into the 70s we'll be 55 at night so plant your basil basil is one right now so let's see what other herbs I brought oh the English thyme plant your English thyme if it ever gets too tall trim it light shape it with scissors you always want to keep them full and with thyme thyme is a lot like lavender don't overwater them. Always keep them more on the drier side. So that's important with thyme. And your, your two cooking times are French thyme and English thyme. The other thymes are more ornamental. Lemon thyme is good also. Um, your, your lime thyme, you can cook with those. But you really, the other ones, like I brought one up. Um, this is, which one's this? This is, oh, well, this is lemon thyme. But most of the really low times are your your ornamental and your taller times are your cooking times. So that's with those. And so what else do we have? We have one of my favorites. Let's see if I, I don't know where I put that. I love oregano. So oregano is one of my favorite things to cook with um, for pasta sauce, for pizzas. And my favorite is Mexican oregano. I love this. So I can take little pinches and I put that fresh on my pizza. So love, love the Mexican oregano. And you have Italian oregano. You have all of them so now plant your oregano so that's a good one. Oh, i brought up some different varieties of oh your rosemary barbecue that's one of my favorite varieties there's another really good one called spice island so if i'm doing any of the rosemary for cooking spice island or barbecue those are the two better culinary varieties and uh what else did i bring up um oh yeah your chives so you could do your chives um, another thing that I will do is parsley. You have your curly parsley or your flat leaf. Your flat leaf is more of your Italian parsley. Like I always will get one and we have it and it's called the giant Italian. So get your big parsley, uh, garlic chives, onion chives, put them in right now. So that's important with herbs is, herbs have a long life cycle to them. But one thing that I always remember with herbs is you put them in an area that gets six to eight hours of sun and you water them on a regular basis. And, and watering might start out maybe once a week, once every seven to 10 days. Um, and really when you get hotter, it might go to twice a week. So watering's a little bit moderate. You can put them in pots, you can put them in the ground. Um, use a good potting soil. Like a lot of times in containers, I'll use like a Malibu potting soil because it drains. I'm in the ground, I'm just breaking up the clay. So I'm using like our GNB planting mix, um, something with sand, maybe some pumice, and just break that clay up. Don't let them stay overly wet. And so the other um, the other herbs that I'm really going after too right now, I can do another round of cilantro. With cilantro, cilantro is gonna start bolting as we get hotter. So do another um, round of it, plant more cilantro right now, but get the small ones. This is a little color pack. So when I see herbs in color packs, I always will grab them because they're smaller. It's not gonna bolt as quick. I think I brought up some uh, parsley, but I don't see it. But anyway, with that, cilantro. Put your cilantro in right now, and usually by into May or June, it will start bolting. So what I do is I plant little amounts of it, and that way I can just cut it in. If it bolts, then I just take it out, because cilantro likes cooler, cooler times of the year. Like, it really likes the winter into spring. 
It doesn't like summer as much. So that's another thing that to look at. Um, another thing when when you do herbs, most herbs don't have a lot of insect problems, but if you ever get like aphids, aphids could be probably your biggest insect problem and sometimes white fly. I'll just take one of the organic soaps. Like I use I like the safer products a lot. I don't know if you guys ever use a safer, but I like this soap. The soap is really good. And what I can do with this is I can just spray the plants really good with it and then I can I can wash it off. So safer insecticidal soap, that's a good one. But you can leave it on too if you want to leave it on. So that's a, a good one to use. And fertilizing, they're not really heavy fertilizer uh, feeders and so maybe just a little bit of like the all-purpose down to earth, you know, that's about it. But plant them you know and we're gonna have a big herb a big herb event this weekend so come out this weekend because it's gonna be huge and we'll have we'll have talks and demonstrations so the the herb event this weekend is gonna be big so uh, watch that and keep your eyes on that well we have it posted on on our uh, social media and then our website so check out our website social media for that event um, going into vegetables so now herbs, I always I already talked about herbs, so vegetables. Right now, you really are starting to finish off your broccoli and cauliflower. So right now, I can still do my lettuce. I'm still doing my greens. So I brought up some really nice gourmet lettuce. You can still plant gourmet lettuce. Got some good chard. Um, and then I also still do the kale and the arugula. Um, but think, as think greens for right now and then we're getting into the warmer season stuff too so you can start planting your warmer season stuff also but right now i will actually i'll do some spinach i'll do some chard i'll, I'll do some kale i'll do some lettuce and so those are really good and um i don't think i brought i thought i brought some up but i guess i didn't but the kale is really good um but another other one there's an ambulance going by so <laughs> i don't know if you guys can hear me so, pretty loud. It's a loud one. I don't know if you can hear me. I'll let him go by. Okay, so back to the vegetables. So right now, like I was saying, I'm doing a lot of the greens, and now as we get warmer, April is, is my favorite month. I'll put my tomatoes in. So I, I brought up a couple tomatoes. Um, I brought, like, here you go, right here, though, too. I can just grab it off the rack. Kellogg's Breakfast. This is a really good tomato. I do like a lot of heirlooms. So I am going to be growing a lot of dwarfs, too. So if you guys ever heard of my side business called Rizzo's Tomatoes, I'm going to have those in in a few weeks. So if you want some of the heirlooms and the dwarfs, watch for some of my varieties. But I like so many tomatoes, like the cherry, like sun gold cherry, black cherry, black cream, um, you have like some of the basics like big beef or celebrity but i tend to key in on those heirlooms so definitely i'll have pink brickle tie-dyes in a few weeks so definitely check with us even on our website to see when when my tomatoes start to roll in okay so tomatoes definitely plant them right now uh your peppers shishitos and all your habaneros plant your peppers right now um eggplant i did bring some eggplant up right now millionaire which is like more of the skinnier Japanese eggplant. Good to plant right now. Um, Black Beauty is your traditional eggplant. Then they make um, eggplant parmesan out of really, really big. I uh, plant that right now. The reason why I do sometimes wait until April to start putting in some of my warmer season vegetables because we're gonna start hitting 50 to 55 at night in about 70s in the day. Sometimes as we get warmer into the following month, which is May, then I'll start doing more like cucumbers and corn and beans. So it's like a progression. I start with some of the, I'll end with some of the greens, but then I always will do my tomatoes, I'll do my peppers, and I'll do my eggplant. And then as we get warmer, I'll break into other stuff. So that's important. And I, I really am not talking so much about fertilizing and feeding them, but generally with with all those three use a good compost a men they're heavy feeders so what i always do with them is i'll use a good compost or a good potting soap i always will feed fertilizing you know worm castings too but this is my favorite fertilizer for my summer uh, vegetables especially when they're fruiting so high calcium high phosphorus high calcium so i can use this when i plant and i'll usually in, in the ground i'll use it about every six to eight weeks in containers i'll use it about every four weeks now what i do i will i'll use it all the way up to when i see fruit 
little tomato, little pepper, I stop feeding because the plant has enough um, nutrients in it to hold it through ripening. So, but heavy feeders, but um, slow down when they are setting their fruit because you don't want that fruit to sort of over ripen or to become soft. So that's with tomatoes. And then um, with, with that, you know, just make sure planting them and spacing. Peppers, I might put a foot and a half apart. Tomatoes, I might put two to three feet apart. Eggplant, again, maybe two to three feet apart. So bigger plants, space them farther to give them room. You know, that's important too. And watering consistently. Uh, but if you have any more questions about that, just come in and see me because I'll, I'll tell you all about the, the vegetables and the herbs. Okay, so moving on, now we're, we're really going to be talking about some of the annuals. So now is a good time to start planting a lot of your spring annuals. So you have, and spring perennials too, I'll sort of go through them. You have the little, the little, um, the, the, the little mini daisies, the chrysanthemum, the snowballs. These are really great. I love using these. Uh, you can still plant calendulas. I'm still putting calendulas in, so we're not too hot yet. Um, you can do your hollyhocks now. I grabbed a, a, a color pack of the mixed doubles, so hollyhocks are great right now. You can do all your coreopsis. I got some nice coreopsis right now. Um, I, I pulled some violas, so I still keep on planting violas in April. Pansies I'm sort of done with, but violas can go all the way into summer, so I keep on doing the violas. Violas are great to put in right now. And um, even for the shade, you have some of your impatience. Impatience can be put in right now. And so with any of those summer, not summer, but more of the spring annuals, now is the time to do them. In the next two weeks, we'll have a whole bunch of marigolds in, we'll have petunias in, and that's when you know when we're breaking into spring, but we don't, we don't have them yet, but soon, next two weeks, mid-April, I'll have a whole bunch of them. So that's with the um, spring annuals. Um, you can do your, your uh, more your perennials too. So I got into some of my favorite perennials. I love the Nemesias. So this is a purple Nemesia. This one is royal blue. I got the, the pink one, and the pink one is enchanting rose. I this is a good little perennial. And when they're done flowering, you always like trim them. And, and sometimes these plants will last for about three, four years. I always plant them in between roses. So great little, little perennial for popping between the roses. So I love using those. Um, some other perennials that I like that are more, and these are full sun. The butterfly bushes, the buddleia are really good. Um, you have scabiosis are coming in. So the pincushion flower, plant those right now. Um, your little, your little Crespedias, they sometimes call this the drumstick plant. Um, Australian native, neat little yellow flowers, a good perennial too for full sun. Um, and then we're getting in some salvias. So the salvias are coming in too, like these little meadow sage, the salvia, uh, salvia nemorosas. You have the mystic spires, and then you have more. You have the cosmos, like the chocolate cosmos. These actually, the flowers actually smell like chocolate. So plant them right now. The armerias, the little seed thrift armeria. Again, another great plant to put in front of the roses because it stays short. The little yarrows or achilleas. These are going to start blooming as we go into spring and summer. I like using those. Um, you even have the um, scented geraniums. The scented geraniums. This is the, the lemon scented right here. These will actually help keep mosquitoes away. So this is like similar to Centronella, but this is the the geranium lemon scented. So that's a cool one right there. Um, what else do we have? Oh, my favorite are the lupins. I love the lupins, like the Russell lupins. They're more biennials. They can be short-lived perennials, but they're more biennials because usually after they bloom, they usually finish off their bloom cycle. So that that is your lupin. Um, you have foliage plants, uh, your helichrysum. These are really good right now. All your helichrysums, like the limelight and the regular licorice plant, it's good. You have the oxalis, the little molten lava for the foliage cover color. These are great for containers too. Um, another one that's good for even containers is Evobulus. So this gets a little blue flower. It's great bloomer. Like using those. Um, what else do we have? Oh, then then a little bit of some of the 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 um, I call them more 
little bit of more like the biennials or they're between an annual and a perennial but they're more like bi biennials these anemones these anemones are really good they'll give you they usually bloom for the next two three months so the, this is a purple variety i like using these um looking to see where did i do with i'm looking for the ranunculus so it's great to start off spring with a ranunculus so ranunculus are a great bloomer for spring they come in the yellows the pinks the whites the purples so i do all of those another one that you want to get in now if you want them to bloom as we go more into spring and summer are your foxglove and your delphiniums so one thing i love about the foxgloves and delphiniums you get those nice tall spikes so these are biennials so usually after they're done blooming they'll die out sometimes they'll shoot little side plants off the side but plant your biennials right now so foxglove like foxy mix some of the mixed delphiniums and always get the giant so this is a giant right here but there are some dwarf delphiniums like the magic the magic fountains and some of those but get the giants because they're taller and they'll bloom really strong so those are really good um going into other perennials we're getting our fuchsias so all the fuchsias right now are coming in in the little pots so the bigger hanging baskets will come in more into may but um i always love to plant four inch or this size i could put three in a hanging basket and just let them trail uh, feed them with a light organic fertilizer, but love the fuchsias. Fuchsias are starting to really roll in, so I'm doing those right now. So those are really good. Um, what else? What else can I go through? Um, now another thing that I will talk about too is even though like we've had a lot of rain this year, so as we go into more of the bigger perennials and more of the drought tolerance just don't water them as much let that soil sort of dry out because some people when we start warming up they'll start watering a lot so you got to be careful because we're coming out of a lot of rain so you always even when i plant i'll sort of lightly amend the soil but i don't overwork it and i always watch the water if the soil is still wet you don't want to keep that soil too wet and rot things out so some of the perennials that i like to go into um i always split them up into different sort of hummingbird plants or more into butterfly plants and so like even this rice flower this is called ozothamnus this is actually a really good plant for the yard this is good for the butterflies so they'll open to a white flower so the ozothamnus or the rice flower is good um i like these the cali lovis are great for the butterflies it's not blooming yet but it gets a little yellow like cup shaped flower but i love this plant and we're starting to get all of our bigger lavenders and some of my favorite english lavenders are finally starting to come in hid coat is a really good one this one you can actually use the leaves and the flowers and you can use this in culinary so this the augusta Fo english is a good one so hid coat is one of my favorites and then there's another one that's a dwarf one called munstead let's see if i can turn around to see if you can see the the labels so these are monrovia plants so hid coat and then munstead two good varieties and with lavenders to remember you can put them in the ground you can put them in a pot but try not to overwater them and sometimes i use cactus mix when i'm planting them and just watch your frequency on the water don't keep them too wet this is a really good variety this is a spanish lavender right here lavandula scotchies um, this is called a nook so i like this one this is a really good one and so there's so many different varieties of lavenders that I didn't bring up, but definitely come in and see us on them because we have fern leaf, we have sweet lavenders, we'll get more intermediates like the Provence and the Grosso. So April is the month for lavenders. So good to plant, starts warming up. So yeah, plant those right now. Moving into more of the perennials, um, I love kangaroo paws. Uh, kangaroo paws can be a little bit tricky to grow because they want good drainage, but the hummingbirds love them. So love the kangaroo paws. So that's a good one. This is a dwarf variety. There are some that are dwarf and some that are tall. This will probably only get about 24 inches tall. So good dwarf variety um, and not too bad with the water. Another one is my favorite and you don't, you're starting to see this again. It's called uh, Silene Druids variegata. This plant, I always used to plant this in front of my roses and it's such a good little ground cover. Very hardy, uh, not that much water. Gets the little white sort of bell flowers. Yeah, Silene Druids variegata, one of my favorites. Um, you go into more of the hummingbird plants, like these little cigar plants. These are the, the kufias or the cigar flower. 
the hummingbirds love these because the little flower, the nectar will sit in the back of that flower and then the hummingbirds will come in and be able to harvest that nectar out of the flowers. So that's really good to use. Um, you go into some of the different other varieties of hummingbird plants. One of my favorite salvias that I've, I've been growing for the past couple years, it's called Amisteds. Amisteds have that really deep, vivid purple flower. The one thing with Amisteds though, you do have to watch out for is they don't get really tall, but they get wide. They'll get about four feet tall and they'll get about four feet wide. So they get very bushy. And with salvias, it's good to cut them back in the fall. Every year, cut them about 50% back. So that's a good one called Amistead. Um, another one that I talked about earlier, let's see if I can find it. If you want more of a narrower variety of sage, the Mystic Spires are good because they'll get three to four feet tall, but only about two feet wide, so a little bit more narrow, and they bloom a really nice blue flower. Um, some of the other ones, I like the Greggii's too. This is another great one for hummingbirds. So this is Salvia Greggii. As we go into spring, these are starting to bloom, either red, white, purple. They stay more compact three feet by about three feet so not tall but bushy that's a good one also um moving out of the salvias the euphorbias are really cool more drought tolerant so you can do all your euphorbias this one is which one is this this one is uh dean's hybrid you get the little bracts on it this one looks like ascot rainbow another little perennial that's good for planting right now um you go into the, oh, this is a good one for butterflies. This is Gallardia, or they call blanket flower. So this comes actually from a wildflower, but this side of the family is more perennial. So this one's definitely a really good one to plant right now. So like doing that right now. Um, you go into more perennials too, some of the comprasmas. And so April, April is the month to plant. So roses, I didn't bring any roses out, but I'm planting all the roses right now. We are getting in some good roses. We're getting in our Floribundas, our Harbor Teas, our Grandiflora. There's a new rose this year called Uptown Girl that's a Grandiflora that we have in stock. So if you like some of the newer roses, definitely that's a good one. Um, Pope John Paul II's good. You have so many of my favorites like Yves Piaget. So come in and look at our roses. They're just starting to bloom. And so now is the time to plant them. Get your soil ready and look at them. And with roses, I usually put them about three to four feet apart, put them a little farther, uh, feed them consistently. If you haven't fertilized them in January or February, you wanna go through with an organic rose fertilizer. I use the rose food by down to earth. That's my favorite. So always go through and start using that. That's a good one. And so what else? Um, I'm gonna go through a little bit on the fertilizing too, because I really, um, and even um, with with other plants, I'll talk a little bit about fruit. I didn't bring a lot of fruit trees out, but now's the time with fruit trees too. But let me talk a little bit about the fertilizers. So if you haven't fer uh, fertilized your citrus, this is the one for citrus. So this is your mineral. Citrus want a really good mineral fertilizer. So this has your iron, zinc, magnesium. So if you didn't feed them in January or February, feed them now. And if they're new, younger than five years old, feed them about every two months. So that's important. Um, I do like this fertilizer too. This is called Bios, Bios Alive. This is a really good fertilizer to get your, and it has a lot of mycorrhizae in it. And mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus that really can help out the soil. And it really does sort of help out plants. So I use this a lot for vegetables and for fruit trees and for strawberries and just all, all your vegetables. So that's a good one to use. Um, and I do like the all purpose. All purpose really is a good one. I mainly use this a lot on vegetables and fruit trees too. If I'm going with other fertilizers, the rose fertilizer I use for anything that's blooming. But this one, I really could use this on all my vegetables. I could even use this on fruit trees too because it's higher in phosphorus. That's very important for fruit producing plants is they have a good source of calcium and they're higher in phosphorus. This is a 462, so that's 4% nitrogen. Nitrogen helps out the plant for growing. 6% phosphorus is extra phosphoric acid. That helps out with flowering and with the fruit and it helps out with, um, with root development. 2% potassium or potash, that helps out with the plant to, um, well, when plants are under stress, pot adequate potassium helps, helps them if they're going through stress from weather like 
really hot, really, really uh, drought conditions. So potassium can help them out, helps them build more resistance against stuff. So that's really good. Um, the compost teas are good also. You know, I've never, if you guys, I'm gonna take one out of the bag. See, the compost tea, the Malibu. So this is good for like a light, light nutrients. I use this a lot on tomatoes and peppers. And what I do is I soak these tea bags in water and I steep them for usually about two, three days. And then I water it in. And I do that every two weeks. One thing that I do differently when I'm growing, especially tomatoes, I always put down my tomato fertilizer first and I put it down pretty heavy. Then, Two weeks later, I do my tea every two weeks. And usually I do this about four or five times. And then by then the tomatoes are setting and then I don't have to use it anymore. So I do use it a lot on my tomatoes and even my peppers to give them a really good good nutrient level. Um, and so what else can I talk about? So like I was talking about with um, fruit trees also, I didn't really bring them up, but now's the time. You can plant your peaches, your plums, your nectarines, all your stone fruits. Get them in the ground before we start heating up. They'll get nice and established before we get warm. And look at most of the fruit trees we get, we get semi-dwarfs. So there's some really good peaches like Red Baron. There's some good figs like Peter's Honey Fig. There's um, pomegranates like Angel's Red Pomegranate. There's so many varieties. So come in and see us on that. And even your citrus too. Um, now's, now's a good time to plant citrus um, also. And so, yeah, and so, and then, then the other fruit be uh, bearing plants, like you can plant your raspberries, your blackberries, and your strawberries are good to do in right now, and your blueberries. Uh, blueberries are good if you, if you have pretty heavy clay, blueberries do better in the ground. We go with more of the low chill varieties, so they're all southern high bushes, uh, but these are, the southern types don't need as much chill. The northern types need higher chill, so we're going with varieties they're under 300 hours or less. So that's important with blueberries, so crucial. But um, I've had better luck in containers. If it's really hot, you can put them in a little bit of shade, but I like to try to put them in full sun and just make sure you water them because if they're in too much shade, they won't bloom. So that's another trick with them. And so definitely come in and see me on those because we're starting to get a whole bunch of them. And so that sort of wraps it up for today, but come in and see me. Um, any questions you have, my name is David. I'm the only David here. There's another Dave, but I'm a David. <laughs> and so come in and see me and um, definitely watch for my tomatoes coming up. Rizzo's tomatoes. And um, now if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff I've talked about. How do the blooms look on a foxglove? Now, so they're asking, how do the blooms look on the foxgloves? Um, foxgloves are very long, skinny blooms. And then they have little bell-shaped flowers coming out. Now, foxgloves are tall, you know, so if you get your soil good, foxglove flowers can be anywhere from about three to five feet tall. So when you do plant them, uh, plant them in a cluster. You know, if I, if I buy six plants, I'm going to put them about eight inches apart and I'll put them in. Uh, you get your most, uh, like, really impact from foxgloves if you plant them in a little grouping. My hollylocks are absolutely covered in orange rust-like spots. Yeah, Should I cut yeah. them back? Um, she's saying that um, her, her hollyhocks are covered with orange powder. Well, that's rust. And rust is going to be a problem this year. So hollyhocks are very susceptible to rust because we've had so much rain this year and moisture. So what you can do is pick off the older leaves. If they have it really bad, um, I will go through and use, there's an organic spray that we sell by Safer Products. It's, it's a rose spray called Rose 3-in-1. It has sulfur in it, so use sulfur about every two weeks, and that will help with the rust. But that's one thing that we're going to really fight this year on um, roses and dahlias and hollyhocks. We're going to fight rust because we got a lot of water this year. So rake up the, the old leaves on the ground, clean up the leaves, and if it gets bad, go and get the Safer Garden Products Rose Spray 3-in-1 because that has... Um, Sulfur and sulfur is a really good fungicide for rust. Does the safer soap burn the leaves of the plants? No, it doesn't. No, they're asking, does safer soap burn the leaves of the plants? No, it doesn't because I'm going to grab it and I want to show you. So, this is an organic fatty acid soap. The reason why it doesn't burn, and this is a big thing that I always tell people when people are using like dish, dish soaps and like, like all the, the palm olive and all that soap. 
those soaps have degreasers in them to break down oil when you're cleaning your dishes or your, your cooking pans. So those can burn the leaves because they dry out. They have so much alcohol and degreasers in them that they dry out the leaves. So they'll burn the leaves. Uh, but see, Safer is made for spraying on plants. It's a fatty acid soap, but no alcohol, no degreasers. Safe to use on, on plants. How do you get rid of aphids on brassias? Brass, oh, brassias. Um, well, that, well, like they're saying how to get rid of aphids on brassicas. Thank brassicas you. make up your family of broccoli, cauliflower, kale, cabbage. Um, so you get a really bad aphid in the winter time. And it's the only aphid that really comes out in winter. It's a silver aphid and it looks like silver powder. Um, they can be pretty bad on getting in the heads. If they're on the leaves, I'll just use an oil spray and I'll use the soaps. But if they're into the head of the broccoli, don't throw your broccoli away. What I used to do with them is I'd cut some of my broccoli heads. I'd fill up the, the, the sink with a little bit of water with some salt and I throw the broccoli heads in that water. So what's going to happen over time, the, the aphids are going to actually float to the top. So you can actually shake them off or wash them off. You can even take your nozzle, if you have a nozzle on your, um, your, your, your hose or your um, sink, wash them out of there. But I love to soak them in water. I learned that years ago from a gardener from Organic Garden Magazine. Throw them in the sink with water over them. And what will happen is they'll float up and they'll be on the surface. So that's a good way to get them out of the broccoli heads. Okay. Yeah. What's the taller pink flower plant by your left arm? Uh, my left arm? Oh, this is, <laughs> this. I'm looking, I'm thinking right, left? <laughs> but this is a, my, one of my favorite perennials. This is called rice flower. So rice flower is in the family of ozo, Ozothamnus. And these get pretty tall. They can get about six feet tall. But they start off with a pink flower. And then they open to a white. That's why they get the name rice, rice flower. But it's a really cool plant. The only thing with them is they're they're moderate with the water. So don't when you do plant them, don't overwater them. Don't keep them that wet because they like to be a little on the dry side. But they're a really cool plant. And then I cut them back in the fall. But oh, that's why I brought it up. I always will bring up my favorites. You know, that's why if you guys have any questions about some of my favorite perennials, this is one of them: rice flower Oseothamnus, and we have them in stock right now. And we have them in the back down near um, past the roses in the back of the nursery. Okay. What is the purple cone flower in front of you on the table? Um, which one? Oh, this one? This, this actually is not a cone flower, but it's a, a budlia. It's a butterfly bush. Because we don't have the cone flowers yet. It's still too cold for them. I'll have the, um, the cone flowers come in as we go more into May, June. So that's one that I'll get later. But this gets into a modern size uh, shrub to about four or five feet. And the butterflies love them. And it's very bushy, but I love these because when you really go into April all the way to like October, November, butterfly bushes will bloom. So they want a lot of water, but they're a great plant for flower in the yard for a, a bigger, more of a foundation shrub. Should I cut? runners off my first year strawberry plants um they're asking if you should cut runners off the first year strawberries i do i really do because you you build more energy in the plant because some people want to want to let them go and you'll get more plants but that can really sometimes it can affect the um the fruiting of your strawberries so i do cut them off and even right now when i plant strawberries to tell you guys i cut all the flowers off and i don't let them flower until usually about may or june now with sequoias being a June bearer, you want to let them bloom, but the later ones like the Chandlers and the, um, the Seascapes and the Ozark Beauties and the Albions and all those, don't let them flower really early because then they'll flower right now and then you won't get that much in, in more early summer. How much vertical space do I need for my intermediate tomatoes? Well, you really want with indeterminate tomatoes, they're asking, they're gonna get about like about six feet tall or so. So I usually just use a cage. I put a cage over them, and if they get taller, I'll stake them. But usually about six feet is adequate. Yeah. Um, best fertilizer for pomegranate trees. Uh, best fertilizer for pomegranates. I like this all purpose. And even though it's not labeled the fruit tree food, I like it because it's high phosphorus. It's six percent. So for all your stone fruits and your pomegranates, your peach, your plum, your nectarine, your apples. All, all those and your pomegranates like the all-purpose by down to earth I use this on just about everything too. I buy a 25 pound bag of this I use it on all my tomatoes peppers 
all my apples get it. So good for your pomegranates, good for any of your fruit trees. So that's a good one. So one more question and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, that's it. Okay, this is David Rizzo. Thank you for joining me today and get out and garden. And don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channels and look for that herb event and watch for Rizzo's Tomatoes. I think I have the label in the back of my pocket. Look, <laughs> so Rizzo's Tomatoes. So watch for them in the next few weeks for my tomatoes to come in. And I got some really good dwarves, so watch for them to come in. So thank you for joining me today. It's a nice Saturday and get out and garden.